What's up guys, it's Aaron Nitmar, and today we are going to be talking about DLC fighters. Now recently in my last few streams, I have been asked a ton about which characters I want to join Smash as DLC. And since the last time I did a video talking about this, not only have my opinions changed a bit, but Sakurai announced that there would be even more DLC beyond the first fighter pass. And at the time of this video, we still don't know the details of what will happen after the end of the first pass. But that really means that we just have no strings to hold us back. We've got no rules, whether they're set by Nintendo or by Smash fans. And so we can really have some fun talking about our predictions. But first, 69% of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel and you may not even realize it. Now I made it a goal to hit 200,000 before the end of 2019, so if you'd like, please subscribe, it would really help me out. Let's get that funny sex number to be the number of people who are subscribed rather than not subscribed. Now my opinion on Smash DLC when it was first announced was very laser focused for one, or I guess two, specific characters, and that was of course Banjo and Kazooie, two characters I've wanted for a very long time. And I finally got my wish, but that then got me thinking, especially because I got asked a ton. After years of wanting a certain character in Smash and finally getting them, who's left? Who else do I really want? I hadn't really thought about wanting anyone else. My thoughts about any character really were mostly just, oh yeah, they'd be pretty cool, but I just was focused on wanting Banjo and Kazooie in Smash. So now that they're in, I've had to really think about who I would actually like to see in Smash rather than someone I'd be content with. So let's start off the list with the memer himself, Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot is definitely a gaming icon. If you asked people around my age about gaming icons from their childhood, Crash would be right up there next to the likes of Mario and Sonic. His games had a really simplistic charm to them. Run forward or backward or to the side and don't hit enemy. But the atmosphere and world that came with Crash, the other Bandicoots, Dr. Neo Cortex, all the different animals, both good and evil, they all just have such a quirkiness and fun energy about them that having the universe involved with Smash would just be so much fun. Admittedly, he'd probably be a character where the moveset would largely need to be made up, but I really don't think that's a bad thing. You could use Wumpa Fruit, Crates, TNT, and of course his signature spin to make a really fun moveset. And maybe it's recency bias, but the success of both the Crash Bandicoot and Sane trilogy and the Crash Team Racing remasters means that Crash is more popular now than he's probably been in a decade. Now Spyro gets brought up alongside Crash a lot because together they were like the dynamic duo of the PS1 but I think Crash would just be a better fit for Smash between the two of them. Now Spyro would definitely be cool. I mean, I've got no hate for Spyro. I love him. I, in fact, played more Spyro than Crash, if I'm being honest, when I was a kid. I just think that in the realm of what Smash is, Crash makes a little bit more sense as a fighter. But moving from the PlayStation 1, let's head to the PlayStation 2 and beyond by talking about your boy, Sora. People love to bring up the Disney issue with Sora and how they wouldn't let him in, but personally, it doesn't seem like a problem to me. All it means is that a third party would join the discussion. Sakurai, Square Enix, and Disney would all need to come together and make an agreement. And people also love to bring up who truly owns the IP of Sora but half the comments I see say Disney owns him and the other half say Square Enix owns him. Who'd have thought that YouTube comments would not agree with each other? But regardless of who owns Sora, I feel like it's not an issue of one company saying yes or no, but a mutual decision. Especially considering how respectful Japan is known to be, particularly in the games industry, even if the Kingdom Hearts director, Tetsuya Nomura, could legally tell Sakurai yes right away without anyone's permission, he'd probably want to go to Disney to discuss it simply out of respect and courtesy for the company. The legality has just never really been an issue for me personally. In fact, I think having two Square characters as DLC is far more of an issue than the simple fact that Disney is associated with Sora. But as for his moveset, he just has so much to pull from. In the same way that Banjo and Kazooie have even their basic moves referencing their games, Sora just has so many moves across so many games that you could probably make three completely different movesets for him and they'd each be as unique as the next. With each Kingdom Hearts game, Sora has a specific fighting style. They usually give him all new animations and attacks and combos, so he really just has endless options. And that's not even taking into account his spells, limits, and forms. 
Sora's definitely an icon, and despite your feelings about Kingdom Hearts 3, the fact that this entry in the series had over 10 years of hype behind it is really just evidence that Sora has a huge impact on the gaming industry. But from an icon on one console to an icon on another, let's talk about Master Chief. Master Chief is truly in a similar boat, where he is an icon in his own right. The first Halo game came out in 2001 for the Xbox, and since then has seen 14 games released, with the new Halo Infinite releasing in 2020. Personally, Halo has always seemed like a constant in life. I was never a huge Halo guy as they came out. I never had an Xbox, and I would only occasionally play them locally at friend's house. But I always felt I was hearing about Halo. The new games, the new maps, or just some friends who had played the night before talking about it. And by high school, I had played a good amount of Halo, because of course, as nerdy high school kids, we figured out how to put Halo on a flash drive and play it on the school computers instead of doing our actual work. And that was the most fun that I probably had in high school, besides graduating. So Chief really has never felt to me like he would be out of place in Smash. Hey, if they can add Snake, then they can add Chief. I also used to be concerned about the guns, but I think if they can make it over the top enough, they could get away with it, kind of like with Joker or with Bayonetta. And looking at Snake's explosives, they're clearly okay as well, so grenades and rockets, they would all be fair game. And that's not even talking about all the alien tech in Halo, the needlers and the plasma rifles and grenades, stuff like that is all energy based, and Smash has a ton of that, so that would easily work too. But Steve Posters would be super mad at me if I talked about one Microsoft IP and I didn't mention the blocky boy. Now, I'm not against Steve by any means. Contrary to popular belief, a lot of people think that I hate Steve and don't want him in Smash. But that all stems from my fear that before Banjo was added, if Steve got in, Banjo could not get in too because they come from the same company. Banjo, Master Chief, and Steve all belong to Microsoft now, despite being created originally from three separate companies. But now that Banjo is in, have at it. Add Chief, add Steve, heck, literally add Bill Gates throwing wads of cash at me for 100% damage each. I don't care now that my bear and bird are in the game. I think that it would be naive of us to not expect at least one Nintendo character to be added as DLC. Even with all of the third-party newcomers added in Smash 4, Corrin was also added, so I think it's fair to expect at least one Nintendo newcomer to join the fight. And personally, I think it would be neat if we could get another Pokemon added to the game. Now, the easy Pokemon to add would just be one of the starters, and personally, if they went that route, I think Rillaboom would probably be the best. He'd complete the fully evolved Fire, Grass, Water Circle that we have yet to see finished in Smash, and I think out of all three starters, he is the most unique. Being able to use grass type moves and also randomly bang on a drum for an attack would really be something cool to see. But if they didn't want to include one of the starters, I think Toxtricity would probably be one of the coolest new Pokemon that they could turn into a fighter. It's the first poison electric type combo that we've had in Pokemon, which would make for a really cool moveset. Imagine being able to use a thunder attack like Pikachu and also a poison attack like Piranha Plant all in one character. That just sounds really fun. And he's got alternate colors built right in. In Sword and Shield, its belly and the sparks on its head can be one of two different colors depending on what nature the pre-evolution Toxel was when it evolved, which would absolutely translate well for Smash. Honestly, thinking about it, I'd probably prefer Toxtricity over one of the starters. He just sounds like he would be so cool. Now we get into the uncomfortable part of the video where I talk about Geno. Lately, I've been more and more on the Geno hype train, and I think part of it is because I feel their pain. I have a camaraderie with Geno fans. Ignoring the couple of Game Boy games and one mess of a 360 game, Banjo and Kazooie are very much N64 characters, just like Geno is very much a Super Nintendo character. So I just really feel the pain of supporting a character that time and again has been passed over and so I stand with the Geno fans in solidarity. Oh, but Geno isn't popular, you say? The man himself says that that doesn't matter as much as making a cool moveset. So you haters can suck it because Geno has exactly that potential. He can throw discs made of light that can deal 9999 damage. He can summon energy from the sky and send it raining down on his opponents. And his hand can turn into a literal gun. 
I mean, the little dude can transform into a cannon. Like, come on, how do you hear that and not think that it's cool? And of course, I'm sure you've heard about the theory where Gino's a spirit in Smash, and then he will somehow get resurrected into a fighter, and that draws a parallel to Gino being a spirit that inhabits a doll in Mario RPG. And honestly, that's just perfect. It would make a really cool fighter announcement, fighter trailer, and it would be appropriate for the character. And speaking of promoting a character, your boy Waluigi could definitely get the bump up. Now I know, I know, Waluigi has always seemed like a meme pick, but, but hear me out. Sans in Smash was probably the peak definition of a meme. I don't know that anyone who wanted Sans in Smash seriously thought that he had a chance to be in Smash. But Sakurai put him in the game anyway. Even as a Mii Gunner costume, he is still in the game. And he even mentioned during the reveal that he was an incredibly popular request. So if Sans, the ultimate internet meme, can get added into Smash along with Megalovania, then seriously anything is possible. And if there's any meme pick that gets made into a full-on character, a Nintendo-owned character getting bumped up from assist to fighter would just be very easy. And come on, Mario has his Wario, but Luigi doesn't have his Waluigi? It's, that, that's just a shame. But like I said, despite all of this, I'm honestly very chill with Smash characters now. Despite me wanting these fighters, if not a single one of them got in, I don't think that I personally would be too disappointed because I got my dream pick, so I'm happy. And aside from that, I fully trust Sakurai with both the picks he's made and the movesets that accompany those characters. A Dragon Quest rep or Terry Bogard or even Bayonetta back in Smash 4. None of these characters were anywhere near my top picks for Smash, but I have a lot of fun with these characters in Smash and they introduced me to series that I may have never played before. And at the end of the day, that's what Smash DLC has really become. Crossing over characters and introducing players to new worlds and new games that they may have never heard of or considered playing before now. And you can tell that's really what's on Sakurai's mind with his development and his choices for characters based on the little speech that he gave at the end of the Terry Showcase. Though the road ahead for Smash development keeps stretching further and further, more and more worlds also get added to Smash regardless, and I think that that is worth it, no matter who gets added to the roster. Unless it's Goku.